What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In today's video, I'm gonna start part one of a series I'm doing in Logic Pro X and it's how to compose music using the score editor. Let's get right to it. All right, so in this video, we're gonna learn the interface of the score editor inside of Logic. I'm gonna show you how to create notes and a bunch of different ways on how you can create these notes in order to start composing inside of the score editor. So the first thing we need to do is of course, get ourselves a software instrument. So in this case, I'm using Keyscape and I'm using a basic piano patch. So let's go ahead and actually rename this piano. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a region. So one thing to keep in mind about the score editor is that this works hand in hand with the piano roll. In other words, the MIDI region. So we got to create a MIDI region. So with the pencil tool, I'm just going to go ahead and grab and create a MIDI region. Now I'm just going to extend this a little bit out to measure five, just so we have a couple bars to work with. And now we have our score editor activated. So we're going to learn the layout and how all of these buttons work in order to help us to write music effectively in the score editor. So we have three different kinds of view we need to pay attention to. We have this first view here, which is essentially the horizontal version of the score. So if I extend this past, let's say 21, you're going to see that all it does is that it extends it horizontally. And this is important because when you're doing playback, you probably don't want to scroll up and down. You want to scroll left to right according to how we see it up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this back to five. So the other way we look at this is by looking at it in part form. So if you give this to, let's say a musician and we extend this out, you're gonna see that it's gonna start moving from top to bottom. This is effectively how you look at it when you're giving a part to a musician. You can see the measures laid out and then it goes from top to bottom like this. So the more measures we add, it will auto fill and create measures from top to bottom. And then the last way we could see this view is by looking at it in score mode. So let's say you have multiple instruments in here. Well, you could see it with the name of the instrument. And if I had more instruments, you're gonna see it in what we call score form, where we can kind of shrink this a little bit. And you're gonna see, let's say piano, you'll see violin, you'll see whatever other regions or instruments you have inside of your track up here. So for this example, we're gonna stay inside of this view, which is the horizontal view. So we can start composing and writing notes inside of the score editor. So those were the three view modes. Now let's go ahead and check out the boxes to the left. So if we open up this panel here, which is this I, or you can hit I on your keyboard to reveal that, you're going to see that we have three boxes. We have a region box, we have an event box, and we have a part box. So today we're going to focus on the part box because this is how we are going to compose our notes. Here you're going to see a couple different boxes that you can highlight, which will give you different musical notation or musical instruction in order to put inside of your score. So we have things like clef, we have things like dynamic, we have things like special symbols, you know, fermatas, any musical instruction. And the way we take these off is by double clicking them and turning them off. As you can see, the more we add, the more the list gets bigger. So you can also rearrange this by clicking on these three lines and then dragging it up. Another thing to keep in mind is if you go to where it says customize, you can create a new set. So let's say you're used to composing in Logic. You're going to want to create your own presets where you want certain things to be active or not. They have a couple of presets already. So let's say I want notes and rest. So it's going to open up the notes, the rests, and a couple of other things that I'm going to need when I'm creating notes and rests, such as key signatures, um, legato, um, or pedal sustain, and then of course your notes and your rests. So for now, I'm just going to keep the notes portion open because I want to start composing some music. So that's essentially the basic things you need to know. As we advance in this series, you're going to start seeing that I'm going to use more tools inside of this part, and then I'll start touching upon these two boxes up here, but we're going to see that in future videos. So now let's start writing some notes. One thing to keep in mind is I like to keep the pencil tool as my primary tool, and then I have my pointer tool as my secondary tool. So the reason why I have it like this is because I want to be able to draw my notes, but then I also want to be able to modify or highlight specific notes. So I use my secondary tool by activating it with command on your keyboard. And now I have my pointer tool. 
So let's go ahead and start adding some notes. So there's a couple different ways you can add notes inside of this score editor. You choose the one that feels best to you and we can go ahead and start composing. So let's say I want to draw a note. Let's do a quarter note. And again, this is not a theory class, so I'm not gonna teach you in this series on what these notes are and what values they are. I'm going to assume you already know this. So let's just go ahead and dive right into this. So we have a quarter note here. I'm going to go with my pencil tool with the quarter note highlighted and I'm going to create a G note. So there's my first note G and all I did was click with the pencil. You can also drag these notes in here. So if I just click and drag, you can drag the next note. And as you can see, you could choose the pitch as well. So I'm going to create an A. And now what I want to do is I want to create some kind of eighth note rhythm. So I'm going to grab my eighth note. I'm going to do it in the key of G minor. So I'm going to put a B flat in there. It auto filled me to B flat, but in case it does not, and you need to move these notes around, you can always hold command, which will put the pointer tool on, and then you can click and drag this note up or down. So since it's on B flat, I'm going to leave it just like that. Just a quick side note. If you don't like playback and you don't want to hear the notes as they're being played, you can click this MIDI out button here which means that the audio the return you won't hear it so if i click and drag this again the sound is now mute this is very important in case you don't want to hear every single note you're laying out you already know what it sounds like in your head or you're singing the melody whatever it is you want to turn it off that's the button to use in this case i'm going to leave it on so you guys can hear the pitches that I'm using. So now I'm gonna create a second note. So I created an eighth note. Now I wanna create some kind of a melody going up. I'm gonna use the eighth note again and create a C note. So look how this one auto fill to C sharp. All I gotta do is hit command, click on C sharp, drag down to C. And as you can see, the, this has C4 in the pitch. You could track what notes you're going through by looking at that pop up. So I'm gonna choose the note C and then I'm gonna end with a quarter note on D. Now let's go ahead and hear this. So I'm gonna hit enter to go back and press spacebar to start. We are already starting to compose some music. So now let me show you a different way to input some of these. Let's say you wanna do the drag method. Well, you can actually grab this part of the box and then drag it out of the screen so that it could be a floating pop-up just like this. So now that we have this pop-up window here, we can actually move this around as we're composing and insert the notes. So now let's say I wanna do a descending version of this. I'm gonna go ahead and click, drag. There's D, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my eighth note. I'm gonna drag. Then I'm gonna drag again. See, I'm creating the same melody in reverse by dragging these notes. And then we need a G. So we just created the same thing, but backwards. And now let's hear what it sounds like. It's not that hard, it's not that complicated, just a little bit of patience. And if you love writing music like this and you don't wanna do it with paper and pencil, well, you could do it inside of Logic Pro, no problem. So now let's talk about another method. So if I close this, it's going to go ahead and open up inside of the score editor again. And what we want to do is now open up a second way to create notes inside of this. So we're gonna go to window and go to where it says show input keyboard. We can also use command option K and you're gonna have this window pop up. So the cool thing about this window is that now instead of creating notes by dragging or by clicking with a mouse, you can actually create it by playing this piano here. So let's say I move this cursor to measure three and I wanna create the same melody again, but this time I want the eighth note to be on beat two. So I'm gonna create the same melody by clicking this quarter note here, and I'm gonna to go to the same G note here. So this G note is actually G3. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the piano and it creates my G3. You can also control the velocity, so how loud you want it, by choosing one of these dynamic markings. And you could do triplets and you could do dotted notes, but we won't get to that right now. We're just gonna simply insert some of these notes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and choose eighth note and I'm gonna do A and B flat. So we have A, B flat, 
and there I have my two eighth notes. Now I'm going to use two quarter notes to go to C and then D. And as you can see, I just created the same melody using this step input keyboard. And you can also create chords with this. So let's say you don't want notes to move horizontally, you want it to move vertically up and down. If I move this cursor right back to beat four and I choose chord mode, I can actually create a chord here. It's gonna actually stack notes instead of putting them horizontally. So let's say I wanted to create a D major chord here. So I'm gonna go to that last note. So it was D4 and I'm gonna do F sharp and then A. And as you can see, I just built my chord. So let's hear what this sounds like. So this is an effective way to create your music. So again, command option K. And that's how you create music using the step input keyboard. So the next method we could use to create music or use the score editor is actually by using just the piano roll. So if we actually open up a separate window for the piano rolls, you're gonna see that now we're on measure four. Now, if you know how to read the grid, we know that each of these lines are the quarter notes in the beats. So we have beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four, and then we have measure five. So another way you could do it is simply by just using the piano roll, um, which will auto populate the notes that you have in here inside the score editor. So let's say I wanted to create again, the same melody now going down. So I can just hit D. Now I can go to C. And if I cut this in half like this, I'm gonna create an eighth note, go to B flat, auto fills like that. G, I'm sorry, A, and then now G. And now if I close this piano roll, there I have my notes as well. So those are a couple ways that you can insert notes inside of the score editor without having to play a MIDI keyboard, without having to, you know, this is all using my mouse and the pencil tool. You can also use your MIDI keyboard and instead of putting it inside of the piano roll, you can actually play it. So if I hit this button here, this is the MIDI input button. So if I go to measure five, and then I start playing my MIDI keyboard. Let's say I'm gonna do the same melody. You're gonna see that now it's creating these notes by using my MIDI keyboard input. Now notice how this wasn't an eighth note. So why did that happen? Well, let's go back and fix this. So I'm gonna use my pointer tool to highlight these three notes and then I'm gonna hit delete on my keyboard which deletes the note. And now we're gonna see why it didn't do the eighth note. Well, it's because if you're using the MIDI input, you also have to make sure that you change the value note so that logic knows what note you're trying to play. So I'm gonna go back to measure two and I'm gonna create the A and B flat. And there it is. Go back to my quarter note and actually let's stay in eighth note and do C, D. And now we're gonna do E flat as the last note because we're in the key of G minor. So now if we listen back to what we compose, you're gonna start seeing that it's very possible to just compose music using the score editor. Let's hear it. And just like that, we have our notes set up. They're perfectly quantized inside of the piano roll, so you don't even need to worry about quantizing anything in here. And that's essentially how you start inserting notes inside of the score editor. Stay tuned for part two, where we get more in depth on how to compose your music inside of Logic Pro X using the score editor. This was part one on how you insert notes and a little bit on the layout and buttons you will start to get familiar with as you start composing inside of the score editor. If you have any questions throughout the video, just go ahead and drop your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios store. There's a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it. So go ahead and check it out. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.